Hey everyone, welcome to Cooking with Native Plants, the series where we're going to take you on our culinary journey through the world of Florida's native edibles. Over the course of this series, we're going to take a look at some of the native plants that may be in your landscape and show you how you can incorporate them into your cooking. So we're going to take a look at all manner of herbaceous plants, fruiting plants, um, and also a couple of tubers. So all of these plants have their own unique benefits, but one of the things that we wanted to shed light on is how you can take advantage of the plants in your landscape. So today we're going to do a spin on a classic cream cheese spread using our native bird peppers, meadow garlic, and dotted horse mint. So I'll be here to walk you through the recipe. And I'll be here to walk you through the garden and show you the plants. Let's go. So today we're going to focus on these three ingredients, meadow garlic, bird pepper, and dotted horse mint. So we're just using cream cheese as a base, so the flavor from this dish is going to come from these ingredients. The meadow garlic is going to bring some sweet roasty flavors when they're caramelized. The bird pepper will bring in some heat, and the dotted horse mint with its herbiness will come and round everything out. But before we can start prepping our ingredients, we're going to head out into the garden and learn about these plants. <laughs> In the cream cheese appetizer, one of the herbs that we used was dotted horse mint. And this is in full bloom right now, as you can see. And I'm getting a lot of insect pollinating uh, activity on here. We've got all kinds of sweat bees and different little wasps and honeybees, and everybody's enjoying the party. Uh, so this is a big attractor for wildlife. Uh, it is obviously used in cooking. We use it as an oregano or a thyme substitute. Uh, so that's what these leaves are. You can use it in place of oregano or thyme. You don't want to use too much of it, but it certainly has a nice flavor profile to it. Uh, this is one plant here. It's about, what, oh, maybe three and a half feet tall and about six feet wide. Uh, it also is an aggressive spreader. It is in the mint family, hence the reseeding. Uh, definitely a beautiful addition to the garden. You can see the beautiful flowers here. Some of them are dark purple, some of them turn almost white. Uh, they bloom obviously in the fall now. When it starts to get too uh, bloomed out and everything, you could just prune it right back. I prune mine practically all the way down to the ground and it'll come back year after year. So a wonderful perennial for the garden. Okay, so uh, one of the other ingredients that we used in our cream cheese spread was bird pepper. And this is a native chili, and it added a little spice and a little kick to our cream cheese spread. Um, you can see some of the orange reddish peppers on here. You can use them either ripe or green. They are hot. They're probably like a mm, jalapeno, habanero hotness, but because they're so small, you can mitigate that heat by just adding one or two and keep adding peppers until you get it up to the heat level that you want. As with all hot chilies and hot peppers, the heat is in the seeds. So if you want to lessen the heat a little bit, you can remove those seeds, do wear gloves, and as you see, this little guy grows into a bush. Uh, gets about three feet tall and about three feet wide. And as you see, the birds 
particularly the mockingbirds, had been in here eating the berries. They will, would, it's called bird pepper for a reason. They will eat the berries. Okay, the uh, other ingredient that we used in the cream cheese spread was meadow garlic. Now at this time of year, meadow garlic would actually be dormant and it won't come up until the winter time. Usually December, January is when your spring onions will start to come up. So I'm gonna cheat right here and use our native rain lilies here, our Adamasco rain lilies as a stand-in for the meadow garlic because the leaves look very similar when they're um, growing in the winter time. Um, right now you would be pulling up your bulbs and uh, I'm sure Davis will be able to demonstrate that for you. They're a beautiful little pearl onion and you use them as you would any onion. And in the winter time when the foliage is up and you want chives or whatever, you just, you would just harvest the tops like you would any chive or any garlic. It's a uh, little bit mighty, I like to say, with all of these native plants, you're gonna have to readjust your palate because you'll find that the flavor profile is much more intense and much stronger. Um, so a little goes a long way with a lot of these things. So now that we know a little bit more about the plants, we're gonna head back into the kitchen and start prepping our ingredients. We're gonna start by slicing our meadow garlic bulbs. They are a little small, so be careful when you're handling them. Put those into a ramekin and set them aside. Next, we're gonna move on to our bird pepper. Now you only wanna use just a couple because as Hillary touched on, they are hot. For this amount of ingredients, we used about five to six peppers, seeds and all. Give those a rough chop and make sure you wear gloves when you do it. This is one of those do as I say, not as I do situations. Feel free to omit the seeds if you want a little less heat. However, if your peppers are as small as ours, you may find it easier to chop them up whole and use a few less. Put those in a separate bowl and set them aside. Last but not least, we're gonna harvest about five or six leaves from our dotted horsemint plant. These are very potent, so be sure to taste as you go if you're not sure exactly how much to use. One quick tip when chopping herbs is to fold the leaves on top of themselves into a little bundle. This will help you get more solid cuts. So now that we've got all of our ingredients prepped, we're gonna head over to the stove and start caramelizing our onions. So I've got about a tablespoon of butter and oil heating up in a pan over medium heat. So we're gonna add our chopped up onions to the pan and we're gonna saute these um, and slowly caramelize them. It might take about 10 to 15 minutes, so. If your onions are sticking and browning too quickly, you can add a couple tablespoons of water to deglaze them. This will lift the fond from the bottom of the pan and keep it from burning. You'll know your onions are done when they're a deep golden brown color. So these are nice and caramelized, so we're gonna go ahead and take these off the heat and bring them back over to the rest of our ingredients. So now that we've got our onions caramelized, what we're gonna do is get everything together. So I've got my cream cheese, I'm gonna get into my bowl. I am going to then add my onions, 
my dotted horsemint, and my little bit of chopped up burnt pepper. Because this is a very simple dish, you can play around with the ratios of the different ingredients. If you like more heat, you can add a few more bird peppers. If you like that herbaly thyme flavor, you can add a few more leaves of dotted horseman. It's all about playing around with the ingredients and figuring out how best to use them. Another thing to keep in mind is that these are all seasonal ingredients. So you wanna be aware of what's going to be available at certain times of the year. Right now, in the fall, the meadow garlic bulbs are available, so we were able to make use of those. Though in the springtime, you're only going to have the spring greens available to you, so you'll have a different part of the plant to harvest. Be sure to season to taste with salt and freshly ground black pepper. Freshly ground is preferred, but pre-ground black pepper will do in a pinch. You want to season at the end when all of your ingredients are together to make sure that the final product is not over seasoned. Once everything's well combined, we're going to plate this up and head to the table for a taste test. You can enjoy this dish on its own with some crackers or chips, or you can add it to any sandwich or wrap to add an extra depth of flavor. <laughs> Wonderful. I will definitely include this in my next dinner party. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you have some new inspiration for some of the native plants in your landscape. If you guys have a favorite native plant, native edible plant, go ahead and leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think. And as always, enjoy gardening and have fun.